Hey guys and welcome to the first FM22 transfer guide with me, Raxwell FM, where today we are going over three signings and three sales for Liverpool. If that sounds like something you guys are interested in, make sure you do smash the like button on today's video, as well as subscribing to the Raxwell FM YouTube channel so that you don't miss the Liverpool series that is coming on this channel, as well as the daily football manager content, including some more transfer guides just like this one. Liverpool are a side that have experienced a wee bit of success recently. Under Jurgen Klopp, they've been able to win a Premier League title as well as a Champions League title. We all know about that. And they've got some good players in there. You know, Jordan Henderson, Virgil van Dijk. Let's not forget about the Mohamed Salahs, the Sadio Mane's, the Roberto Firmino's, Alexander Arnold's. I could go on and on. However... With the up-and-coming competition of the Premier League, including your Manchester Cities, your Manchester United, your Chelsea's, you're going to have to continue to improve the squad to stand a chance to beat them in your first season. However, it's possible, but the first thing you need to do is sell some players to bring in some money, because unfortunately, the board isn't giving you a whole lot of it. £20 million is not terrible, by any stretch of the imagination, for FM22. But if you're looking for a world-class player, you do need a wee bit more. So the sales do need to be made. And the board do actually have some decent expectations of you. I've just talked about some seriously impressive teams that could be pushing for the Premier League title this year. And the board want you to win it. As well as reaching the final of the FA Cup and reaching the semi-final of the Champions League. So when you highlight that, £20 million seems like a little bit of a, a low ball that's why we're going to have to add some funds to that we're going to go out we're going to make some signings let's find out who we're getting rid of the first player that is leaving liverpool fc is a man that's not been at this club for very long unfortunately it is takumi minamino he just doesn't have the quality that we need in this Liverpool squad. For example, you've got Jota, you've got, of course, Salah and Mane out on the wings. You've even got Curtis Jones coming through the ranks. A lot of other great players in there that can play in that position. Maybe not as naturally, but at 26 years of age and a two and a half star current ability with not a lot of room to grow, I don't know if this man is going to be a future prospect for you or even going to be that useful within your squad. His stats aren't bad, but aren't bad is not going to win us Premier League titles. And with a value of £15 million, that is already going to be a very hefty amount of money to bring in, considering the fact that that is almost the £20 million that we start with. In this save, I managed to sell him to Napoli for only £10 million. It's not an incredible fee, I will admit, but that is still a really decent fee to get for a man that you're not going to use that much and isn't going to get much better. In my beta save, I actually managed to get more money than this, but I was wanting to do some deals pretty quickly. I think I got around like £14 million. So if you hold out and you wait for the right offer, you can get more than this. By the way, go check out the beta save if you want. The iCard's already come up, but you know, go, go click it if you want to. And uh, I think that this is an intelligent deal, not the one that you're desperate to make, but an intelligent deal to bring some money into the club. We've now got £30 million. The next player to leave Liverpool is Lorius Carrius, and they've already got him on the transfer list, so this one seems like an absolute no-brainer. I'm not even going to bring up what happened in the past. This man is a decent goalkeeper, don't get me wrong. 28 years of age, but he doesn't have a lot of room to improve. He's nowhere near as good as Ellison, and you've got a couple of other options that are just as good as him, if not slightly better for the future. For example, Adrian, if you compare the two of them, they're pretty similar. I will give Carrius the wee edge. However, if you're wanting some value for money, Carrius is worth about 3.1 million, whereas Adrian is worth 2.4 at a maximum. So, you know, I'll take a wee bit more money. Also, if you compare him to the youngster coming through the ranks, Kelleher, who is actually worth a hefty fee, He's, uh, again, not a whole lot better. I think it's worth keeping those players around as opposed to this man, who is just not going to get a whole lot better. Not going to start with so many goalkeeping options. It's time to sell one, and my pick is Karius. However, you could definitely not go wrong by selling either Kelleher or Adrian as well. One of them needs to go. Karius is my pick. And in this save, I managed to get exactly 
what he's worth, 3.1 million. He's gone to Zenit. I think he'll do well at that club. And I just think that he's the easiest to sell out of all the options. So the most logical one, you can get rid of him straight away. I think I offered him out and he was gone from the club within five days of simulating. So easy cash right there. Not a whole lot of money, but still going to be enough to help contri contribute towards some seriously decent deals. And the last player that we are selling is Joel Matip. He's a bit of a favourite for a lot of Liverpool fans, but unfortunately in this game, I want to stress, I'm saying in this game, I think it is a good decision to sell him. In real life, maybe not, but you know, in this game, it's time to cash in. He's worth 57 to 62 million pounds. And if you can hold out for a bid that will get you that amount of money, it is an absolute no-brainer. However, I'm... 100% certain we're not getting that amount, but if we can get around half of that, I still think that is a great deal to go towards some more important transfers. As at 29 years of age, with, to be fair, some really good stats, still don't think he is worth keeping around when we could be cashing in for an incredible amount of money. If we compare him with a youngster like Joe Gomez coming through the ranks, who could be starting instead of him, there's not a lot in it. And my opinion is that Joe Gomez would be the better man to start to try and develop him for the future. I will admit, you know, Kanate's definitely not on the same level of him. In fact, I don't even think he starts in the first team in this, but he, he is a decent player that you have as an option. But when you compare them, yes, Matip is better. But Kanate is 22 years of age, able to develop. Matip is 29, already at his peak, not even going to start for you, and worth £60 million. In this save, I've managed to sell him to Paris Saint-Germain for exactly 32.5 million pounds. Yes, that is a lot less than his value, but if you want to hold out till January, January, yeah, that's how you pronounce it, isn't it? January, you could probably get a wee bit more for him, but personally, I want this money right now to reinvest in better players because I know for a fact with 30 million pounds, you can get a better player that's going to be more effective and more important in your Liverpool side for the entirety of your save than Joel Matty. But I'm definitely sad to see him go. He's not a player that you desperately need to get rid of because of any flaws with him, any flaws with his squad. But when you don't have a lot of money, you've got to make tough, de tough decisions. And apparently you have to have some pretty good grammatical ability. <laughs> And I think Joel Matip is the most logical of the expensive players on your team list to get rid of. And now you have given yourself a budget of £63 million to go and spend. So what do we have to do? We have to go spend it. But we have to analyse our team and like see what we need to spend it on first. With all of those sales made, well, three sales made, this is what your best 11 is going to roughly be looking like. And I imagine most of you will be playing with either this formation or this formation. So going over to my favorite screen, we can take a look at how our team fits into those shapes. Starting with the striker position, it's interesting because Firmino is a great player, definitely a star quality striker for the time being. However, he's 29 years of age and Divock Origi who's meant to be his backup, isn't exactly getting a whole lot better. So I would identify this as a potential area to improve for a youngster coming through the ranks to slot into that striker position. On left wing and right wing, come on, it's, it's Salah and Mane. Not a lot needs to be done. You've also got Jota out there. On the right wing, maybe a wee bit weaker, but Oxley chamberlain and even your youngsters coming through the ranks like Curtis Jones can do a job out there. Yeah, absolutely fine for those positions in central attacking midfielder or even your attacking midfielder if we're going with this shape um it's 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 room for improvement i would say you know the main player in that position is going to be oxley chamberlain or tiago and now neither of them are bad options but are either of them world-class options tiago is definitely considered to be a defensive-minded player in a lot of situations so I think this one is an area that you could certainly improve on. Sadio Mane is going to play out on the left. Roberto Firmino's up top. Cam, it's one of my key positions. In the central midfield, you've definitely got enough options in there. Some really nice players, some players that are coming up through the ranks. Not too many really young players in there, but enough, enough depth that you shouldn't be too worried about that position at all. At centre-back, because I have gotten rid of Matip, I will admit there is a little, little bit of... um 
you know, not not so much depth. So you could bring in a new centre back, but in my opinion, with Van Dijk and Gomez starting, and then having Kanate on the bench and Fabinho able to slot into that role, you should be okay. But I wouldn't blame you if you brought in another centre back at left back. We've got Robertson and Simakas. You're fine. Never need to worry about that. At right back, however, you don't have a real out and out replacement for Alexander Arnold if he does get injured, but. Fabinho, Joe Gomez, Milner able to play in that position, you're probably going to be okay. Not too much panic. And in, in between the sticks, at the goalkeeper position, Ellison and Adrian, it's fine. You've even got Kelleher in the youth development system thingamajiggy. He's going to be able to come up through the ranks if you really need him to. So, to summarise, I believe... A young striker would be a great signing. A central mid attacking midfielder is a must. Maybe a right back, maybe a send back, and maybe a central midfielder who's a bit younger. So with those in mind, let's take a look in the transfer market. Let's spend £63 million and let's improve this Liverpool side. Our first signing is the man on the thumbnail, or at least the man I think I'm going to use for the thumbnail, Frank Kese. And he probably doesn't really fit what I just said for the last five minutes. We don't desperately need a central midfielder. However, when a man like him comes up for £16 million, one does not simply not sign him. I'm sorry, but this is the bargain of the series. You can pick him up for £16 million with the potential to rise to £30 million. I think Lelujo picked him up for £28 million up front. He's a great signing. He's got so many brilliant stats. can play as a ball-winning midfielder, a box-to-box -box midfielder, even a deep-line playmaker. And he's going to absolutely be a rock in that central midfield spot for years and years to come. 24 years of age. And now you, you genuinely don't need to worry about the centre mid position for, I would say, five years. Five years and you'll be fine. You've got Fabinho. You've got Kese. You've got... Henderson, who is getting older, I will admit, but you've got Keita, you've still got Oxlade Chamberlain, you're sorted, boys and girls. Our next signing is certainly one for the future, and his name is Kareem Adeyemi. I love this man, such a great wonder kid on Football Manager. Able to play in the striker position or even the right wing position. Wasn't really a position that we desperately needed right wing, but it's handy that he can cover that. I think more the striker for the future is what we wanted this man for and for only 8.5 million pounds potential to rise to 20 i will admit but that is an absolute steal for a player that has a potential ability of five stars absolutely love it already some great stats physical ability looking very nice definitely going to improve in the future technical to leave a little bit to be desired especially that 10 finishing as a striker you would want just a wee bit more than that however he's gonna he's gonna get better he is an absolute wonder kid in this game such a good pickup get him in any save that you can but to be honest in this liverpool save i think he is going to be especially valuable if you are looking to do a very long term save but only 10 million pounds thereabouts up front. I think this man is an absolute steal. And last but not least, another German youth wonder kid. This one's even better. Jamal Musiala coming in from Bayern for only 41 million pounds. Come on. Come on. Like, how dumb are they? I mean, I know that I've got a potential fee going up to 67 million pounds in the future, but how, how dumb? can you be to let this man go 18 years of age a wonder kid and look at those stats he could already start in your campus he will already start in your camp position this man is such a good pickup and of course he has five star potential ability of course he has five star potential ability look at those stats he may as well already be five now that's going to wee, wee bit above and beyond boys and girls but the great thing about this guy is he can play in the left wing position the right wing position the camp position and the center mid position playing as that mazala if you do want to play the 4-3-3 with a cdm instead of a cam but he can definitely do the job in cam if you do want to put him in there so many great stats already only going to get better in the future and yes, that is an expensive signing, but for what you're getting, for the age you're getting, I think that, I can't believe that they even let this man go. I just think that they would say, no way. Like, this is the perfect Thomas Miller replacement, and they've just given them to him to us for £41 million. So now all of the transfer deals are done, and your team is looking a little something like this. Musiala up there in Cam, Kese in there in central midfield, and Ademi 
probably sitting in the reserves or on the bench. Definitely could loan him out, get him some match time, and uh, I think he's going to turn into a great player. And I think already that team looks so much better than where we had it before. And I haven't done a whole lot. I just made a couple of tweaks, gotten rid of some players that we weren't going to use anyway, and we've spent a lot of money. But there's still more things you could do with this Liverpool side. Not a lot of money I've left you with, but you could sell some more players, bring in some more players, and fill those other gaps that we highlighted. But for now, that is all I am doing. What I want you to do for me now is find out what happens when you sign these players because I have signed and sold all of these players in my FM21 beta save. I've also signed and sold a couple of other players as well, but, you know, three signings, three sales, you know, kind of restricted in this video. So if you want to see how Kese, Musiala, and Adeyemi do, please make sure you do click the subscribe button so you don't miss the daily football manager content that's coming your way with the FM22 Liverpool beta save. Have I seen FM21 at some point during... I really hope I haven't, but there's a good chance that I have. And it's going to be a great ride. We're also going to do more transfer guides like this in the future to potentially do it with your club. I don't know. I don't, I don't know where I was going with that sentence, but I'm done for now. I'm proud of those signings. I'm proud of those sales. Make sure you let me know down in the comment section below who you signed, who you sold in your Liverpool saves. Have I done well? Have I not done well? Probably a good chance I haven't done well, but I think they're going to be great signings for your future. I'm proud of them. I hope you've enjoyed the ride. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you all later.